Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Effective Resume Thursdays. We're very, very glad you're with us. It's uh, March 4th, 2021. Uh, please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and picture to appear. Uh, for those people who are on Zoom, if you're using a PC or Mac, we ask that you use the speaker view, which is in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, and you're probably gonna wanna have the participant box open and the chat box open because we'll be using both of those. And you can see that uh, is over there on the right-hand side, the right side of the left picture that's on there. And where that red arrow is, uh, you can grab that uh, white line right there and change the size of the speaker versus the PowerPoint presentation. So, you know, whatever is comfortable for you to do. If you happen to have two monitors, you can break out your uh, participant box and your chat box onto a separate monitor. Uh, for those on Zoom, please, we ask as soon as you come up with a question, just put it right in the chat box. Don't wait for us to, you know, don't think about it. Just put it in the chat box right away. For those on uh, Facebook right now, please just enter your comments into the comment field. I'm monitoring that feed and I'll make sure we get those questions answered for you. Do you have two resumes yet? Or are we good? Yes, we're good. We're good. All right, we'll skip that field. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I founded Career DFW uh, to help those people in job search in Dallas Fort Worth area. In 2012, I launched CareerUSA.org to help people outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area after being invited to go to the White House to uh, meet other people from around the United States who were doing the same thing we were doing here. I've written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It's available on Amazon. Uh, I have led the and facilitate the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. We've been meeting since 2000. Well, I've been leading it since 2007. The group's been around since the late 1990s. And I'll tell you about our programming coming up tomorrow uh, at the end of this session. And I've been a member of the practice interview team since 2017. Uh, we are gonna give away two licenses to jobscan.co. We'll pick two people, uh, two winners at the end of this session. So uh, please hang in there to the very end. That'd be appreciated if you'd like to have an opportunity to win. Well, we have two outstanding speakers with us today. Carol Brookell, who's a certified professional career coach and G, and I'm not gonna even try to pronounce uh, last name. Uh, she's a human resource consultant and founder of Golden Synergy Touch. So ladies, thank you for being with us and uh, let you take it away. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for the introduction. I do appreciate it. And I'm going to close my chat because I'm going to share my screen. Good. And I'm really pleased to have uh, G as a co-presenter to here today. I really appreciate for taking the time. I, I met G through the pit crew because Jeff and I both volunteer for the pit crew and and I've volunteered on a couple panels with G and I, I like the feedback she provides to people so I invited her to join us today so that's really nice and thank you to all of you in the audience who are joining today and I'm wearing my bright red that looks kind of orange on my screen I'm wearing red because Liverpool's playing today if anybody's a fan of any international soccer teams feel free to type in your club name in the, in the chat <laughs> so that's why I'm wearing red today but thank you for taking time out to attend our session I encourage you to put your phone aside and put your full focus into the session because we do cover a lot of content. And I told Jeff, this is the fastest hour of the week <laughs> for me. There's a lot of great content and we have two resumes to show at the end of the session. And that's everyone's favorite part to see some real feedback uh, live uh, regarding resumes. And we have designed this to be fun and interactive. So please click on your participant box and click on the green check mark if you can see it, if you can hear my voice okay, um, or click on chat and type A okay or okay in chat if you can hear me okay. And for some people, uh, Zoom recently moved those chat buttons around. So if you don't find them at the bottom of the participant box, just go down to the very bottom of your screen where it says reactions. And if you click there, all the reactions will pop up. Yes, and then I, and we can see those on your pictures. Yes, good. I see somebody has done that. Excellent. 
So definitely open up your chat box. And um, I'd like for everyone to go into chat and type an answer to this question. And I'm going to pull up my chat box as well. Move it over. If you see me looking over here, I'm just looking at my second monitor or I see chats. Okay. So when uh, so the chat question is, do you typically customize your resume when you apply for jobs online? And people are um, yes. Oh, Man City follower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's one of our biggest competition. Uh, good. Okay. And most people do uh, customize their resumes when you're applying for a job. And I highly recommend that. That's an important first step to study the job description, align your resume to the job, and then follow up with somebody. That'll increase your chances of getting a resume. Good, good. So, um, so thank you for answering that question. Additional information. Okay, good. And additional information as the question of experience comes up. Good. All right. And in today's session, what I'll do is I'll provide information about my background. And you'll be hearing a lot of ideas about resumes. And this is from my perspective based on my experience. And G will also be sharing some ideas from her perspective. And your job as a participant is to listen to all these ideas and Choose the ones that are applicable to you. Not everything that we talk about will be applicable, applicable or will resonate with you. So just uh, apply what works best for you. There are lots of different ideas out there. And my background is I spent 30 years of working for an IT company. It was called EDS and it was called, acquired by Hewlett Packard. And then I took early retirement in 2012 and gained six years of experience, valuable experience as a recruiter. So I worked in both agency and corporate recruiting environments. So I learned what it really feels like to look at hundreds of resumes and present those to hiring managers and get their reactions about what they like and don't like about resumes. And so that's why I've developed this template that I use and also I've been certified by the Professional Association of Resume Writers and Career Coaches. And, um, and they use a very similar template. So that's why I teach the way I do. And I've placed candidates in a variety of roles. And as I've mentioned, I've volunteered for the Dallas Pit Crew and I continue to volunteer for the Dallas Pit Crew. That's the practice interview team where you can sign up to do a mock interview. Both Jeff and G are also volunteers. And um, as I mentioned, I've um, been certified by the Professional Association of Resume Writers. And we've posted information about the pit crew. And all you have to do is send an email to dallaspitcrew at gmail.com with a copy of your resume and a, and a target job description. And we'll set you up with a panel interview uh, to do a mock interview. And now I'd like to give G a chance to introduce her background. You can go off mute. Yes, I'll let you go off mute, yes. Hi everyone, I'm Jihan Haridi Ardenowski, or G for short. <laughs> Carol's heard me say this a thousand times in our interactions together, so pleasure to be here. Um, I am uh, similar to many of you. Um, I myself until a few months ago was a very avid job seeker and the difference between maybe other job seekers currently uh, versus where I'm at is I have been to the rodeo, so to speak, multiple, multiple times over the years. So my unique value add in a lot of cases is the fact that yes, I have an HR background. I have a recruitment background. I too have screened hundreds, possibly thousands. I wish I, I wish there was a way to keep numbers on these things, Carol, I swear, <laughs> but thousands probably of resumes over the past, you know, 15 to 20 years or so. I've seen a lot and I will tell you that my perspective as both a job seeker and as um, a recruiter is that it's, it's challenging and every company is gonna wanna look for something different, but I know we're gonna get more into that. My background is really more of um, a general, so I'm HR, um, generalist, trainer, recruiter, all the bells and whistles there. I, like I um, heard Carol say, um, I too am a member of the pit crew. So if you're not taking advantage of that resource, highly, highly recommend. It's a wonderful process. And as an experienced HR person and recruiter, as a job seeker also, I've learned a ton from Carol, especially too. Um, so um, 
for me, um, you'll see too on the slide, my mantra is to cultivate an advocate for the candidate and workplace experience that's sustainable, flexible, laughable, and tweetable. And by that, I am a huge advocate for the candidate experience and making sure that, you know, as best as we can to get candidates through the process, but a very solid resume is key. So that's that should about do it, I think. Great, perfect. Thank you so much for the introduction. And as I mentioned, I've worked um, as an agency recruiter and I still keep very close in touch with my friends at Next Step Recruiting in the Dallas area. And I like to share their hot jobs. And these are some of a, this is a sampling of some of the positions that they are recruiting for. And they specialize in accounting, finance, marketing, HR, administrative positions. They also have a high tech division and they fill jobs so quickly they don't even post them online. But most of those are programmer type of uh, positions in their high tech space. So if you happen to be an accounting, HR, finance person, uh, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and share your resume and I can get you connected with a great recruiter at Next Step Recruiting in the Dallas area. Most of the jobs are Dallas oriented, but I'm finding more and more companies are learning that you can do your job from anywhere. So it doesn't hurt to get in touch with a, a, a great recruiter to have that as an additional resource for you in your job search. And are you all ready for the agenda so we can see what we're talking about today? We'll review some information about applicant tracking systems. If you've seen one of these resume Thursday sessions before, type yes in chat or comments. Um, and if not, um, say first time here um, in chat. So if you've seen one of these before, type yep, been here. Or first time here, type first time here. A lot of people, a lot of return people. I'm a regular. That's great. And that's why we like to mix up the content every week. There are certain things we kind of review, but we like to bring in guest speakers like G and bring in different um, speakers. And somebody came back a second time. Good. Okay. Excellent. So we'll review some information about applicant tracking systems. And G, at any time as we're talking about things, if you think of an idea or a, a, an additional perspective, feel free to jump in. And Jeff, too. And then G will review her top resume tips. We'll talk about the concept of a one page bio versus a full resume. And um, uh, then we'll talk about the concept of a master resume. And then we'll walk through, we'll kind of review the key components of a resume. And then we'll review those two sample resumes. And thank you for the two people that have submitted theirs. People enjoy looking at those. So applicant tracking systems are those systems when you're applying for a job online and you upload your resume into a system. It's going to read your resume and parse the data. It'll take your name, your address or your phone number, LinkedIn address and put it populated into the database. And so you don't want to use any special characters in your version that you're uploading into the ATS. You want an ATS friendly version of your resume. When I say ATS friendly, I mean a resume that's free from any special characters, even underlines, boxes, tables, special customized bullet points. And um, I know Workday specifically does not read any of the data that might be put in a Microsoft Word header. And Workday doesn't like PDF versions either. So, and each system works slightly differently. So you might even hear conflicting information about these ATS systems. But you do want to use, you do want to align your resume to the keywords in the job description so you get a good match. And Jeff will be giving away a couple of, um, what do you call them, licenses to jobscan.co, which is a great tool to compare your resume to a job description to see if you're a 20% match or an 80% match. And then often the ATS systems allow you to um, upload a resume as an attachment. And that's the one that the recruiter will look at. And, um, and you may want to put that in PDF format so it protects the format layout the way you want it to appear. And if it asks for a cover letter, you can do that. I just don't recommend spending a lot of time on those because as a recruiter, I never had time to look at cover letters. G, did you ever read cover letters? No, I was just laughing here. Um, no. <laughs> I didn't. And, you know, this debate and people in the audience will hear this back and forth from 80 different resources. 
I personally, as a recruiter, never read them. I, I've actually had one hiring manager, when I went for an interview as a candidate, tear up a cover letter I'd written in front of me and said, I have no use for this. And it was just laughable to this day. So to Carol's point, do them if it's a, an essential part of the process, but don't spend too much time on them. That is so funny. I felt like doing that with cover letters. I'm like, your resume should speak for itself and your resume should be aligned to the job. Don't have a generic resume and then make me read a second document to see that you're the right person. So yeah, I get frustrated with them. But we do have a really simple template that you can follow. And sometimes it does look more complete in the application process if you fill out the cover letter. Um, okay, all right. And so we do have a simple template you can use. And then regarding these ATS systems, as I mentioned, there's several different systems. There's Workday, Taleo, iSIMS, and a whole bunch of others, and they all work differently. So you need to just kind of keep the big picture in mind. Best basically um, upload a version that, um, of your resume that doesn't have any special characters. It's gonna throw off uh, the reading of your data. Another thing Workday doesn't like is um, hot links. So if you make your email address or your LinkedIn URL a hot link in your resume, that'll throw off some systems. So just keep it as text. And then if you can, um, review the information that's been uploaded just to make sure it's been uploaded properly. I know Workday allows you to do that. And then the most important thing is um, since oh, I'm gonna ask a question since we have some return guests during today's webinar, um, when you apply for a job online, what are your chances of getting called for an interview? It's a percentage chance on a scale of one to 100. What is your percentage chance of getting called for an interview? <laughs> we have some people that have heard this before and I can attest to it based on my experience and I've read articles that say 2%. So it's virtually zero. So you have to take an extra step. So you wanna target the jobs that you meet the requirements, customize your resume, and then follow up with a person and let them know that you meet the requirements for the job. Even if you meet 90% of the requirements, say that you meet the, the main requirements for the job. And that's like the secret password that recruiters listen for that word. That's like gold. So if you know somebody at the company, reach out to your buddy, send them an email, say, I just applied for this requisition number at your company. I meet the requirements specifically X and Y, point out a couple specific things. Please forward my resume. Um, I'd appreciate it or I'd be grateful if you could forward my resume to the right recruiter or the recruiting manager. Or if you don't have a buddy, reach out to the recruiter who posted the job or search for a recruiting manager. If you don't know the name of the recruiter, search for the recruiting manager and they can get you to the right recruiter. And then somebody said, ask the question about contacting the hiring manager. I'll provide my perspective about that. And I'm interested in G's perspective as well. As a recruiter, when I worked as a corporate recruiter, the CFO would come down the hall to me almost every other day and go, Carol, I got another one of these resumes. Can you put it in your stack and screen them for me and give me the top five best ones? That's your job. I don't have time to screen these resumes. I'm tired of these people calling me. So that was kind of my experience. And also it was my job as a recruiter, both as an agency recruiter and a corporate recruiter to be the one to scan. And as I think about it, gee, yeah, I've, I've reviewed probably thousands of resumes. In fact, I know it's thousands, but that was my job. I knew what the hiring manager was looking for. My job was to go through the 300 candidates and find the top five best based on the three keys, the three key skills that that hiring manager is looking for. That was my job. So I encourage people to work through the recruiter, get to know them, establish a good relationship with them because they will be the ones presenting you to the hiring manager. Now, if you happen to know the hiring manager or if it's a former boss of yours that you're networking with, I think that's great. But in most cases, I say work through the recruiter and establish a really good relationship. Gee, what, what additional insights do you have about that? You know what? I'll second you a thousand percent, Carol. I mean, uh -huh. the exact same thing for me. Um, you know, one of the things that's it's frustrating too as a recruiter and an HR person is again having that hiring manager come over and say, I, you know, I can't deal with this right now. Go ahead and screen this person out. 
to me personally, and I know this is a separate topic um, that you guys cover, but again, it really is about establishing those contacts, like Carol was just saying beforehand, and making those relationships, having that, I guess, um, foot, I guess, that um, step ahead of the game, or however you want to phrase it, Carol, I'm getting my words twisted here, but you get where I'm going with this. Something that will set you apart from someone else right off the bat, and there's other ways to engage beforehand, but yeah, it's it's a bear because a lot of times, and you have to understand, and again, I'll be honest with you, you guys, last year as a job seeker, part of why I'm making my transition now into doing something else because the job search was so tough for me and trying to get through the process and through the ATS and to the managers and going through all of that. It's one of those things where it really is critical to, to, to try to do your homework ahead of time because those recruiters, and I learned this, they get hundreds of inquiries a day. You can send in mails, you can send anything, but the hiring managers have it even worse if their names are out there. So um, just something to be mindful of because it's, it's not a good way to start things off if you're stalking the prospective employer. That's just my two cents, Carol, and please feel free to poo-poo it. I just, that's... That's just what my thought would be on that. Yeah, no, thank you for adding that. And I do hear some career coaches and some agency recruiters saying, you know, work towards the hiring manager because for agency recruiters, um, the corporate recruiters are kind of their competition. So that's their perspective. And they're working directly with, with the hiring manager. So that's why they encourage that. So you hear different perspectives. So, um, and then on the other hand, whatever works, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. So anyway, but uh, I've just found working through the recruiter is great. And we do have um, another question. Somebody said, should I make contact before I apply? I'd say for the most part, most recruiters will ask, okay, are you already in the system? Because they want to know you're in there because then they're going to call the the recruiting manager and the recruiting manager is going to be looking in the system. So I kind of recommend apply first and then call your friend right away. Would you agree with that, G? Or? I will tell you, yeah, sorry, I keep muting and unmuting just yes. to make sure I'm not speaking out mm -hmm. of turn. Absolutely, too. Um, that happened last year um, at least three times where I reached out to people to say, hey, do you have an in? Do you know this person? Do you know that person? And every single time it was bounced back to me to apply first. So I learned that lesson. It's not fun because you're frustrated already and then having to go through yet another you know, step to even try to get a foot in the door. But it really is the best way. At least you can say, hey, I did my, I did my due diligence. I did my homework. I took that first step how can you help me from here, friend of mine? Yes, good, that's excellent. And then somebody asked if ATS systems give more weight to information on the first page. And um, and wow, I got a message. Your host has spotlighted your video. Okay, all right, that's cool. Anyway, I don't know what that means, but um, is there more weight for the words at the beginning of your resume. Well, you do want to put a lot of keywords at the top of the resume just because the recruiter is going to see that first. And many recruiters don't even read much of the text on the bottom of the first page or the second or third page. They may just scan through it and just double check your, your um, degrees and software skills. So I don't know if the ATS mathematically puts more weight to it, but you do want to front load um, the keywords. Good. Now I will turn it over to G to talk a moment about her top resume tips. Okay, great. So again, as someone who has looked over tons and tons of resumes and as a candidate, I've received all kinds of crazy feedback uh, from different angles and different perspectives. And, and that's the one thing that you've got to understand too, you guys, um, as you're going forward with all this. Um, Carol is giving sage advice here, but you're going to hear different things from different people. It, at the end of the day, you're going to need to do what's best for you and where the majority lies and, and what you feel is best with your resume. That's just my advice. But my two cents is this. So here's something to think about. And these may sound simple and basic to some of you, but you'd be amazed. So you want to ensure consistency and cleanliness throughout. So your fonts, your tabs, um, no fancy page borders. I will tell you this until last year, actually. I had one, and my resume looked fabulous. It was, for the most part, ATS compliant, but I had one of those borders on a simple black and white resume because I thought, ooh, it's black and white and clean. It's crisp. 
it was poo pooed. It was basically, you know, I was told, don't do it, remove it, remove all of these different formatting things. So be wary of that. Um, just keep it very basic. There are other opportunities. Like my number two step would say, fluff and stuff should be reserved for something else. So um, you can omit pictures or you should omit pictures and the fluff and stuff, leave that to your LinkedIn. Um, again, you've got a featured section on your LinkedIn for that, your Instagram, your personal website. Um, also on your resume, very important to going back to consistency, use action verbs. So things like executed, established, supervised, monitored, those are the things that are going to drive you and ensure that if you have left your current position, you're no longer there, make sure you change them to the past tense to establish, not that they're current. So something that it's little, but it comes up a lot and people overlook that um, as they're submitting their resume for new opportunities. So just something to, to keep in mind, go back, my suggestion, take a look at that, take a look at your most recent position and make sure it's either active or passive depending on your situation. Um, like Carol was talking about, of course, submit your resume consistent with the job description as best as possible. Um, I am poster child for not taking that advice and failing miserably at that exercise last year. Um, I did not want to bother with it. I was frustrated. People kept insisting it works. Oh, and this was me. I don't care. I'll get something. I'm telling you right now, do not make the mistake that I made. It is gospel. You really do need to reformat, refocus, use that job scan. It is critical to do it. And then also, um, if all of this is still confusing, uh, it's overwhelming. I'll be honest with you. I'm a you know, 15, 20 year recruiter, HR person, all of that. But I'm also, uh, or have been a, a concerned job seeker and questioning why I'm not able to get the opportunities and make it way, you know, my way through that applicant tracking system. Last year, I sought out a couple of expert resume writers because I'm not an expert resume writer. I'm great at you know, writing mine and I've gotten good feedback on mine. And as a recruiter, I'm great at looking at them. But again, it's an expert level that is reserved for people who really know their stuff. So be mindful of that. There's a lot of opportunities out there to engage with people who can really support you on that note. Does that help? Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, G. These are these are great. I'm really glad you mentioned uh, the consistency with the verbs and, and spell check because so many resumes have errors in them. I'd say 90 to 95 percent of resumes I look at actually have errors in them in terms of either spacing, aligning, a verb tense, something. So yes, so those are those are great um, pieces of um, advice. And now before we dive into the formatting of a, of a standard professional resume, which is typically two or three pages, I, what, I do want to talk about the concept of a one page bio. And, um, you know, resume really signals you're looking for a job. And if you're meeting with somebody, you're saying, do you have a job for me? But a bio can be used it's more of a high level document. It can be used in a variety of, of, of situations and informational interviews when you're just getting to know somebody or seeking advice about your career. It doesn't scream, I'm, do, do you have a job for me? And a resume focuses on work details and you use it primarily for job searching, whereas a bio focuses on major accomplishments. And, and again, it's a multi-purpose tool. And I had looked online for some good formats for for bios and, and I couldn't really find any that I liked that were easy to update. But I had a client, one of my career coaching clients had a format that was in Microsoft Word version. And I asked him, I said, are you getting good feedback about it? And he goes, yeah, I get really good feedback about this. I said, can I borrow it? And so I borrowed his template and I just plugged my stuff into it so I could share it with people. And he said, sure, do that. And uh, so this is just one example of a um, executive bio and we're sharing the native MS Word version in chat if you want to leverage this. And this is kind of like LinkedIn social media, so it's okay to put your picture. A resume is a job search tool used in the application process, and it's more subject to employment law issues. So that's why you don't want to use your picture there. But when you're networking on LinkedIn or informational interviews, a picture is fine. Um, there's a place to put some of your keywords, areas of expertise that align to the keywords and the jobs that you're looking for. A little bit of background information, not too much. Your biography, which is just the company names and dates, education, certifications, contact information, 
and a few key points about major accomplishments in your career, again, aligned to the skills or areas of expertise uh, that are being looked for in the jobs that you're seeking. So you're welcome to leverage this. And I'm finding more and more of my clients of all levels are using this uh, format when they're networking with people. So uh, feel free to share and leverage. And also, I learned from Jeff the concept of a master resume. So, Jeff, if you have a moment to share kind of your words of wisdom about this topic, that'd be great. Well, I, you know, you want to make your job search easy. I mean, I'm sure everybody probably if you I have I know I have a photo of probably, you know, 30 years of resumes that I've built over the time. So if you go and create a master resume, meaning it has everything you've ever done, all the different uh, jobs you've had, all the different, you list, the, you have the bosses, the addresses, the name of the company, uh, eight or 10 or 15 bullet points underneath each one of those jobs. If you create that master resume, it could be 10 or 15 pages long. Then when you have to apply for a job, or when you do apply for a job, you then save that resume, save as, and then you start eliminating everything that's not on the job description because you wanna make it as easy as you can for the recruiter to go, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. Yeah, this person's done X, Y, Z. You don't have to tell them about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H that you've done. Tell them what you're looking for so that it matches up and the recruiter goes, yep, yeah, I wanna call this person or let's, pers let's move this person along. So uh, make it easier for the recruiter to get that phone call. Great, thank you so much for that, Jeff. And I'm going- um, Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Can you go back for a second? Yes. I have, is it okay to ask a question? Yes, of course. Clarify, <laughs> clarify something for me, please. Again, as a job seeker, this is the job seeker me asking you. So on the master resume where it says include all of your jobs since high school. I'm just noodling this again. I'm, I learn from you all the time. So Explain to me how that makes sense when, for example, I have, say, my 20 plus years of experience since college. Why would I go back to high school years to, to, for relevant roles when well, we're in college it, to keep it and, beyond a certain point? Okay, in my, son's, in my son and daughter's case, both of them did internships at a, in a high school program that directly relates to what they're doing now in their jobs. So they it actually may have formed what they decided to do for their career by this high school uh, co-op program that got started. So you only include those high school jobs if they're relevant. If they're not relevant to what you're doing, you don't include them. But you know, everything you've done post high school, you should definitely have on. And if you don't, if it's not important, you're not gonna include it anyway to the recruiter. Gotcha, thank you. Great question. And I, I did have a comment about the, the picture and adding it. Yeah, it does add a touch of being friendly. And a quick comment about pictures on LinkedIn or, or these, you wanna have something that's within the last two or three years, recent and outdoor lighting. And my background's a little busy. So you wanna have maybe even a, a lighter background or pure white, um, actually recruiters like that. And you want your, your image to take up about 60% of the image. So, um, so yeah. So that adds a little friendliness there. And you may want to use that same image across LinkedIn, your bio, Facebook for consistency because you're a brand, you're selling yourself, brand yourself. Yes, yes, good. And characteristics of good resumes. The main goal is you want to make it easy for the ATS, the system, and the people, the screeners, the recruiters to see that you're a good match for a job. You want them to look at it and go, hey, good, this is the kind of person I'm looking for within a few seconds. So you want the formatting to be clean. As G mentioned, you know, nothing fancy. We've heard other recruiting leaders say, don't do two columns and fancy stuff and purple borders or yeah, just keep it clean and simple. And overall length, as I've asked a lot of career coaches and recruiters, what do you like to see in a professional resume? Two to three pages seems to be the sweet spot. Two pages is great if you can. And there are some jobs, like more technical jobs, higher education, where um, three plus pages is okay. And then we have a little question here about the number of years to show on your resume. I'll give you three options. And I'd like for you to either 
type in the letter, or I think we have a polling question too, that for the people on Zoom, you can answer this. How much information do you show in your resume? And this is kind of a personal preference. You show A, all of your experience, B, the most recent 10 to 15 years, or C, focus more details on the recent 10 to 15, and then have a section called prior relevant experience. We might show some older jobs, but maybe leave off the dates for those jobs. And wow, ooh, this is the first time I'm seeing a lot more people are doing option C. And I will tell you, and I'll ask G here in a moment, the kind of feedback she got from hiring managers. Um, I've used A, even when I was looking for a job at the age of 59, <laughs> and I had 38 years of experience. I showed all my experience, but the people I was networking with, they knew me and, and um, they knew I'd been at EDS forever. So it worked for me, but I don't know if it works for everyone. When I was a recruiter, I saw a lot of resumes that were chopped off after 10 to 15 years, and it looked like they were chopped off. It looked like you were hiding something, and it, and it caused confusions in the interviews when I'd say, you know, tell me about a time you managed a large group of people. They'd say, oh, when I was at IBM, I managed a group of 100 people, and I'm looking at the resume going, well, I don't see it. Where is it? And they go, oh, that was so long ago. I didn't even include it, and that just adds confusion. And I found hiring managers really preferred to see option C. They like to see the details of about the most 10, 15, or maybe even 20 most recent years. But then they like to see the full picture. They wanted, the, and they didn't want anything hidden. So they liked seeing prior relevant experience and maybe list some of those company names and job titles. And you don't even have to put the dates on those. So that's a way to um, kind of get around that if you don't want to show how many years. G, do you have a perspective on this particular topic? Oh boy, do I. So <laughs> yeah, so I will, okay, um, I vote C and here's why. So I, I have actually put out my age before, so uh, there's no secret. You can look at my profile and for the most part, you can tell I'm about 44 years old. I just turned 44. So here's the thing. I graduated from college exactly 20 years ago, which I say that and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, 20 years. Yeah, I have 20 years of experience. I'm in that boat, folks. For me personally, what happened with my background is the bulk of my corporate experience with longer tenure and longevity, whatever you want to call it, happened prior to 2010. So if you look at my background, and you can even tell if you were to look at my LinkedIn profile, for example, in my, if you, you have to scroll down to go further back, but the bulk of my experience with like, you know, two, three plus years is there. Whereas in recent years, some experience that might not be relevant um, to what I'm, you know, currently applying for, that's closer to the front. So I have to go back a little further to bring people a part of my story, but that's just it. You want to be able to give a story. So yes, there's history to it. That's part of why, for example, I'll, I'll share, yes, this is the emphasis over the past 10 years, but also here's the bulk of, you know, my background from the past. And oh, by the way, while in college, which is even before that, I had work at JD Power and Associates and Kelly Services and da 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 da, da. So it's the package. And there's a way to frame it. Um, so it's a really dicey question because there are people who will tell you under any circumstances or under no circumstances, should you share anything further back than 20 years? But Carol and I would definitely agree that yes, you should include that experience, especially if it's relevant. Now do, and this goes back to my question before Carol and Jeff, when I was asking about the high school piece, I thought, okay, great. So I'll go back 20 years, but another five or six years or so, then that's high school. Why do I need to go back to the high school? Yeah. For me, At least it's relevant. Exactly. And it might be a, a story that you tell. Like if somebody asks me, tell me about a time you implemented a global leadership development program. My story is about 20 years ago, but I can tell it like it was yesterday. <laughs> it was huge. So, and Jeff, did you have an additional comment? Okay, I just, okay, I just like to check in. So you're off mute. Okay, good. So we're going to have to fly through this section here so we can get to the sample resumes. I'm going to quickly review the key components of, of a resume. You want your header to be really clean with your name front and center, four types of information and we will share our template the resume template so that you can download that and walk away with it and do not put your physical street address on your resume you don't need to do that 
Your summary profile is very important. You want the headline not to say objective or professional summary, put the title. If you've been a business analyst in the past and you're applying for a business analyst job, put that front and center so the recruiter goes, yay, that's the kind of person I'm looking for. In a very brief summary, about three lines using lots of keywords and language that are used in the job descriptions you're applying. Yeah, don't put your address, your physical street address on your resume. There have been some employment lawsuits actually over some issues with street addresses. Carol, can, it's yes. I have a question about that. May I ask a question as a candidate? And I'm not sure if job seekers have seen this, but I have even recently, for example, when applying for a job, there are some platforms for example, if someone were to send their resume and apply through, say, for instance, an Indeed platform, it specifically asks for an address. Do you know the law? I don't know what that logic to that is. And I'm reluctant to include an address because we're told don't give an address. But I have run across that and I don't know if others have. Do you know anything so about that? Oh, and the job application process? Yeah, uh, well, as part of the is part of the not the formal application, but just to get the resume. If, for example, if you're applying through Indeed, you want to send your resume. It'll oh. ask specifically for an address. I don't know if you know anything about that or how that works. Well, and if it, it asks for it, then give it. I just don't put it on a resume. Yeah. So okay, mm -hmm. but but if somehow in the process it's asking for it, I think you have to. And if it's a required field, you may have to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, another session. Oh, uh, resume example for north of 20 years. This, the sample we're providing is useful for more than 20 years of experience. Just put prior experience after the 15 or 20 year mark if, if you need. Okay, so I think you can use the sample for that. So you wanna modify this for each application and areas of expertise. The, the ones across the top in the first column need to align with the jobs that you're applying for. And then an optional section, especially for people that have to do roles where it's a lot of meeting targets or quantifiable statistics, maybe have a section about key um, career accomplishments. And then in your professional experience section, make it real clean with your dates right justified. Um, make sure your verbs are parallel as G mentioned. For jobs in the past tense, make sure all of your verbs are in the past tense. And then if the companies aren't very well known, it's nice to include a little one-liner about that company, especially the industry type of work they are. That'll help the recruiter get to know you quickly. And in your professional experience section, you only want to include maybe five or six bullets per job. If you have 10 or 15, nobody's going to read all that. And your bullets should focus on results, should not sound like a job description. And to get it to focus, to get your bullets to focus more on results, ask yourself, so what? And here's an example. Uh, it's a client that I was coaching about a resume. She had a bullet point where she said she guided the next stage of brand and evolution and multimedia managed film production. And I said, well, so what? What was the outcome? That was kind of a funny way of asking. So what was the outcome? What was the result? She goes, well, actually it increased the business for the client. So based on that, she updated her bullet to start with a more impactful verb, focusing on the result. And then she also updated the language to align more to the keywords in the job description. So she reworded it to say increased business opportunities, including 10 new commissions for my client based on developing a full social media and PR strategy. Those were words they were using. So she did a really good job updating that bullet. And if you've had multiple roles within a company, please follow this format. Because if you put all of your dates right justified for all the individual roles, then at a quick glance, it looks like you're a job hopper. But if you put the full time you're at the company and then the dates for the jobs like this, then it shows the, the true picture that you had better longevity at the company and that you're promoted. So please put your dates like that. And then if you've... Um, at a company that's changed names. That's probably happened to a lot of people. There are a couple different options, either the current name followed by the old name or the old name with the date of the acquisition. So my resume in 2012 said Hewlett Packard Enterprise Systems, formerly EDS, um, or I could have said EDS acquired by Hewlett Packard. So I could have done that. 
And then be sure to include your education, software skills. If they ask for Microsoft Excel, put it on your resume. It might seem like a no brainer, but, but do it. And if they're asking for other tools that you have in your background, please include those. And if you don't have a degree, um, put the school, city, state, maybe the area of concentration and maybe the number of course hours. And don't say bachelors if you don't have the bachelors. And then here's an example of what we mean by analyzing the job description and really study the keywords um, because you want to study the job to make sure you meet the requirements. And then if so, then update your resume to leverage those keywords and experience. And look at the bottom part of the, of the job description where they say, here's what you'll bring or here are the requirements for the job or the qualifications. And if they're looking for certain methodologies like Agile and Scrum, you know, and you have that background, be sure to list that front and center and look for any um, software tools that they're looking for. So please spend a few minutes doing that. Great. Okay, so now we're going to share some sample resumes. And thank you for the two people that, that volunteered theirs. Okay, Let's see if I can remember which one was first. Yeah, I think I remember. And I'll have to do a new share. It's taking it a moment. New share. And I'll click on share and see if it sticks. Okay, good. Sometimes when I click on the chat box, it doesn't. Let's see if it'll stick. Chat? Yay, stick. That's about every other time. All right. So thank you for sharing your resume here. And what I'm going to do is it did it again. It kicks me out. I'll do it one more time. Share. New share. There we go. Okay, I'm not going to click on chat this time. All right, so um, I'm going to scroll down through this resume and um, I'd like for people to make comments about what they like and don't like about the particular resume. And, um, and G, if you have any comments, we'll scroll through it first. So we see the top part of it, the summary, the professional experience section. And, um, and there's a header or something for the second page, education. Good, good, okay. So lots of good information here. I don't what? think you need the words email because if somebody hadn't figured out that that's an email address, you don't need the, do you really want them contacting you? So save that extra space by not putting that on there. Yeah, and the city, um, Hearst, that's great. If you're open for anything in Dallas or Fort Worth, I would put Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I mean, and that would make you really valuable to a recruiter. They say put the closest major city uh, that you're interested in. So that's just one little thing. And I would add your LinkedIn address because people are, are wanting that. And instead of summary, um, try to put the job title. If you've been a cash poster, if it's um, you know, cash applications specialist or something, cash app specialist. Put that front and center. Yeah, because it takes me a little, a moment to realize what kind of person you are. Because I see summary and then it says administrative professional, but I see you're really an accounts payable or receivable person and payroll and collections. So if you're applying for a payroll position, put that front and center. If it's a, an AR accounts receivable position, put that front and center. And I think I, for the dates, I would put 2012 to 2019. I wouldn't put, there's no reason to list the months, but put the, put the full years there. You put yes, the months on an application. It, you don't have to put them on a resume. Correct. That'll make it look cleaner. And if you've been doing anything since 2019, if you could put that at the top of your resume, if you've been doing any community leadership or any consulting, even pro bono, you know, put that community leadership and consulting 2020 to 2021, um, if you've been doing a lot of work in that area. Good. Are bullet points and underline acceptable? Okay, uh, I would take off the underlines because that J, it won't read it. Uh, bullets are okay. Now, if this is a table, that could throw it off, but if you're using tab marks, it's okay. And start off the, the summary with the word experienced. Yeah, I think that's good. 
just short-term contracts. Hey, I would say um, accounts payable professional supported multiple clients, including or whatever, and list the client names and then put a couple bullets about what you've done and accounts payable or receivables or whatever. So if you need help with that, uh, reach out to a um, resume coach, mostly AR cash, cash posting, that's valuable. Put that in your resume and you can kind of clump those together. There are ways of doing that. Good. Any other comments? G, do you have any suggestions? Uh, no, I'm just I'm looking as you're scrolling. Um, okay. and I, yeah, I would agree with the underline to remove that. Yes, definitely. yes. And let's see. Yeah, this one, AutoNation, looks like you have the, I think, the whole, the full time you were there. And then I would put in parentheses next to these job titles if, if you were a, um, and I wouldn't, I would spell out an acronym. I'm not sure what that means, finance and intake. I don't know what that means. Um, I would spell that out um, and then put the dates that you had those jobs. Any particular format for the date? I would do what Jeff says and just put 2011 to 2012. Um, okay. Client names. Yeah, if you can, if you have permission to list the client names you worked for, yeah, if it's okay with them, absolutely. Underline is your title. Yeah, still, even though um, it's your title, the ATS systems won't read it because um, some of the letters, characters go below the underline. So you just don't want to use underlining um, in an ATS version of a resume. So, um, and then you're using Jeremond fonts. The favorite fonts for ATS systems are Calibri 11, Arial 10 or 11, and Times New Roman. I'm not sure if they like this one or not. I'm not sure. Okay. And it's looking for a comma there. Okay. And also in the header, the very, very top, you're using all capitals, uh, even lowercase capitals, which I, I think you should do upper and lower. Yes. Yeah. Upper and lower case so it can read it. And um, nowadays, you don't really have to have this header with the page number, especially at the top. It kind of breaks the flow of thought and most resumes are looked at online. And if a recruiter does print it, they'll print, print it front and back. So you really don't need that there. Um, it kind of breaks the flow of thought there. And um, I have maybe one minute to show the next resume, I think. Let's see if we can pull it up real quickly. Take a quick look at the next one and I do want to give Jeff some time to give the giveaway. So I'll just make a couple of quick comments on this one. Oops. <laughs> and again, every, about every other time, Zoom just gets overloaded and kicks me out. Okay. So something's funky here right away in the centering. So make sure this is centered properly and I would take out that line, dedicated, motivated business student seeking. Um, yeah, you don't wanna put your objective. You wanna put a description of who you are and the skills you have. Education, work experience. Yeah, um, I'd recommend working on, and you don't wanna put references available on request anymore. Um, yeah, this one needs a little bit of work. So I would reach out to somebody on, yeah. on good, clean font, pretty good formatting, but it needs some work. So um, feel free to reach out uh, to me um, or anybody you trust on that. Okay, good. Good, so. Right, well, ladies, thank you all very, very much. Uh, for those people on Facebook and if uh, you're on the phone or something and you need a copy of the sample resume, the T cover letter, the bio, just send me an email at resume at careerdiffw.org and I will be sure to uh, send that. Just let me know what you're looking for. Uh, it may be Saturday before I get to you, but uh, I will reply with those on there. Uh, please be sure to join us uh, every day of the week now. We're doing something Monday through Friday. So every Monday we're doing a networking session, Tuesday LinkedIn, Wednesday interviewing, Thursday effective resumes, and Friday morning the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. Uh, all of our Monday through Thursdays are at one o'clock central. So it's a lunch and learn. Bring your lunch 
and uh, you're welcome to eat your lunch while you're listening and learning something new. Uh, so tomorrow at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, we're going to be having open forum. Uh, you have questions about your job search. It'll be uh, sort of a free for all, but I also have a short little presentation on who is your personal board of, who's on your personal board of directors. Should be a very interesting little presentation. Uh, I recorded it this morning. I need to do a little editing on it and uh, we'll play that back tomorrow. Just a, a interesting what somebody did about who's helping that person do what they do. So uh, join us tomorrow morning, 9.30 in the morning. On uh, next Monday for Networking Mondays, our speaker is going to be Kurt Vondermatter. He is a professional executive retained recruiter, uh, and he's going to talk about networking, how to network with CEOs, how to network with coaches and friends. So uh, join us next uh, Monday for that at 1 o'clock. Next Tuesday for our LinkedIn presentation, our speaker will be Locke Alderson. He'll be talking about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies that get results. And then next Wednesday for interviewing Wednesdays, we'll be on session number 10 of 13, uh, building rapport, establishing chemistry with the interviewer. Very important trait that you need to do. So join us next uh, Wednesday at one o'clock for that. This session will be recorded, has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page. And later this afternoon in a couple hours, we'll be up on the Career USA YouTube channel. Please follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're not receiving emails about our workshop, we have an email distribution list. If somebody told this uh, about a, a friend told you about this, careers, Career USA plus subscribe at groups.io. And I'll put this email address up at the very end of the presentation so you to copy it. Uh, on the YouTube channel, it looks something like this. Click on playlist and then don't click on the video, but click at the very bottom where it says view full playlist where we see that red arrow. And then up will come a list of the different presentations that we've done over the time uh, to be able to go back and, uh, and see things. So that's the best way to go back and view like if you want to review today's session. All right, let's give away uh, two licenses to uh, jobscan.co, uh, pick a number between one and 100, and it'll be the two closest numbers without going over. So we're playing the, we're playing the uh, price is right rules. So the two closest numbers without going over between one and 100. And as soon as, Give everybody another few seconds here to get that in there. Everybody's got numbers in. Last chance. All right. Uh, let's see what the slide says. Our winning number today is 94. 94. So let's see here. Uh, 94. So 50. Uh, there's a, oh, uh, all right, so Rosemary's got an 82, and it looks like Chuck's got a 66. So um, those are the two closest, 66, Chuck, and... 78. Oh, is there a 70? Oh, wait. Oh, 78 from Sandra. Oh, okay. So Sandra, 78, and... Rosemary and 82. Those are our two winners. Please send me an email. You can send it to resume at careerdfw.org. And uh, that way I can get your information and I'll get it on the list. This will be for the month of April. So uh, you'll be able to use it for the month of April. All right. Okay. Uh, please remember Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, what Carol does, what G did today, those they're just volunteering to help you, the job seeker. Uh, we have, Career DFW has no full or part-time employees. I'm a volunteer. Uh, this is what I do to give back to the community. Uh, it's my pleasure just to help people. I've never gotten paid to do any of this over the last 12 and a half years. Uh, Career DFW, we survive on donations. It pays for Zoom. It pays for the web names. It pays for the web hostings and the other things that we have to pay for. So please consider when you get your next great opportunity to uh, please uh, make a donation and help us continue to do what we're doing. So thank you very much for joining us today. There's that email address if you uh, like to subscribe. If you're not getting our weekly emails, uh, we put out seven emails a week. 
Uh, and that's it. And you won't be spammed. But uh, we really appreciate everybody being with us today. So uh, Carol and G, thank you once again. Yes, thank you, G, for